in Solar Revolution, a book that was published in 2012, there's a number of studies that are mentioned in here regarding the human behavioral response. For example, associations between magnetosphere disturbances and crime waves were investigated in the USSR in 1980 and again in 1990. You see, so the very people that work in law enforcement, hospitals, even the media, even librarians, people that work with the public, but especially mental health workers, they're doing a disservice to the anti-suicide movement that's growing. There's more awareness that's growing regarding the suicides in this nation. They're up 33% in recent decades, but knowledge about other factors that are present during periods in which there's more suicides, that's not on the table. Still today in 2019, so-called authorities consider that crazy. So coming up, we're gonna go over the Caltech study and they found evidence of a human response to fill changes, although it was taking place on the subconscious level. But in this moment that I'm recording this video, we're gonna go over a few studies that are in the book, studies that people can find for themselves. What are we to make of all this? The author asks. What does the future hold in store? I have focused my discussion on geomagnetic fluctuations, as well as the migration of the magnetic North Pole. There are definite signs that the geomagnetic field is currently undergoing fundamental changes that exceed the scope of what would normally be expected within a short period of time. This holds true in particular for the aforementioned pole reversal of the geomagnetic field, which according to the intervals that have been determined for this key process is likely to occur in the very near future. Okay, we're gonna find another study here. Okay. We are pained by the impact of geomagnetic disturbances on the sense of direction of birds, whales, and dolphins, for who can remain unmoved at the sight of a whale stranded on a beach, powerless to find its way back into the water. Such situations invoke feelings of pity and empathy in all of us, and this is only natural. But can we hope that after reading the present chapter of this book, you will feel more than just sorrow and pity at the plight of whales and other animals that lose their way because of geomagnetic disturbances? I think you will also realize that their plight is a mere image of our plight or what will soon be our own, and that we too may be disoriented like a beached well. In other words, are these dramatic changes in the cosmos directed at us? You bet they are, and a dying well would appear to be the perfect apocalyptic symbol for our plight. The author goes on, moreover, electrostatic smog from cell phones have, has infested virtually our entire planet, although its effects are still being planed down played down and the calm or the claim is still being made that electromagnetic spectrum of cell phones is completely benign. The unfortunate fact of the matter is that electromagnetic fields generated by cell phone antennas mainly use unnatural disharmonic frequencies that bear no relation to any natural frequency. Even more invasive is that human interference with the natural system of electromagnetic fields where just the scope of the interference is staggering. So again, I'm talking about all this unnatural, disharmonic frequencies, 5G and all the rest stacked on top of what's natural. And I think that's creating massive mental health problems in the United States today. It's the technologies mixed in with the geomagnetic storms, mixed in with an apathetic population for the most part that doesn't wanna hear about it, doesn't see it as significant, and mental health practitioners therapists, psychiatrists that have absolutely zero knowledge in the actual studies that have been done that are cited in this book is they recommend more drugs. And so you need to be aware that the mental health profession, right, isn't looking into this. Some people, when they come across this information, they think, oh, oh, if only we could just get it in front of such and such. Oh, wow, it's not that easy. These studies have been around for a long time. Look at how many studies Russia has done while the US uh, has apparently been sleeping, or has it? Because when we peel the pages back, or the layers of the onion, we find 
Michael Pessinger, if that's how you enunciate his name. And so we find literally studies the CIA did to gauge how efficient their own remote viewing program was when they were officially conducting it under Stargate. They did actual studies. They attempted to find out if people were more psychic during the geomagnetic storm or more psychic during a solar minimum. And they found a lot of psychic potential during the solar minimum. And we are in the quiet before the storm. This is a time, by the way, to listen and pay attention to those visions. Pay attention to those dreams, pay attention to those insights, pay attention to those ideas that are bubbling out because it's how we respond to this energy. And by learning about this energy and how powerful it is, this prana, this chi, we can choose to do positive things, launch awesome parties that are not based in losing ourselves to a bottle of tequila. But oftentimes we'll see people doing the most partying, drinking, doping, fighting, gang banging, you name it, hooking and hooking up and all the things up, down and in between. Let's find something else to cover here. By the way, we're on page 56. The natural electromagnetic fields to which we are subjected convey morphogenetic information to us, please excuse the wind, such as our orientation relative to the North Pole. But these fields also communicate far more complex information than this by the same alpha wave frequencies that render our brains receptive to instructions while we are under hypnosis. It's also highly probable that these frequencies will enable us to receive vital information that will help us cope with the events coming up in the next solar maximum. This person was writing from 2009 looking at the solar maximum of 2012. Right now, we are looking at the solar maximum of 2025. And I'm working to raise awareness that these studies have been around for a while. Listen, that declassified 800 page report declassified by the CIA I report that are trying to look at them and their remote viewing is more accurate. There are hundreds of references from Michael Messenger to others where they looked at like the brainwave activity to changes in the magnetic field in a controlled setting. The government apparently has been involved in this study for a long, long time. They did an amazing job keeping out of public schools, meanwhile making sure public educational school system is uh, filled with a lot of uh, nonsense. The late uh, John Taylor Gatto, I believe, is well known for his expose on the public educational school system. The bottom line here is that natural electromagnetic fields exert a calibrating effect on living creatures that helps regulate natural biorhythms, whereas artificial electromagnetic fields sow confusion. Does that make sense? This isn't our enemy. Yes, there are cancer risks. There are things for an element of the population. I do recognize that. But ultimately, the sun is responsible for our life here on Earth. If we had a Yellowstone event that was to cover the sun, yeah, that wouldn't be so good. Is there another reason why they're spraying the skies as well? Is there something that they know about the consciousness and the protons coming from the sun that most people don't? It is, of course, totally natural that the test subjects characterized these unexplained inner voices that occurred without warning in a awake state as the initial symptoms of a mental disorder. But the fact of the matter is that mental abnormalities can also be provoked by strong natural force fields. Although such phenomena differs in nature from that of a genuine clinical disorder. They are like waking dreams that allow a person to work through backlogs of cosmic messages. You know, Waking Life, the movie, came out during the solar maximum period. Mm hmm 2000, late 90s, actually. According to what we now know about the association between geomagnetic disturbances and visions, genuinely tragic events regularly unfold in psychiatric hospitals in that many patients who are admitted to these institutions during periods of solar wind magnetosphere interaction it's a mouthful, there are four words, I'll say it again, solar wind, magnetosphere, interaction. They also call the, the, the sense beyond the six, magnetoreception. And we'll be talking about that in a future video. These patients are often individuals who normally would never have been classified as mentally disturbed. But highly geomagnetic activity provokes symptoms for which the only possible explanation appeared to be a psychiatric disorder. 
So we have studies. We have studies and we have more studies on genetic mutations. And that could be seen as uh, a positive in some cases, uh, genetic leap forward. Uh, we can also see the detrimental element of that extreme exposure to radiation. I'm Alex Hansery signing off. There's going to be more content coming your way. Check out Patreon if you can, as well as the additional content uploaded to outsidethebox.vhx.tv.